Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I have the, as Diane mentioned, the coveted before lunch spot. Um, so thank you to Allison and the organizers here. There's a, a study um, out of Israel, I think this was published five years ago, maybe four years ago, that looked at parole rulings um, by the time of the day and basically showed that when you get right before the meal break, right now where the red arrow is, that basically you're just gonna go back to jail. So you're not getting a favorable <laughs> ruling. So I, I'm, again, deeply appreciative. Thank you, Allison. Uh, <laughs> so with that said, I will try and uh, uh, make sure that we keep this um, energized and interesting and get you off to lunch um, shortly thereafter. But uh, some of you know, Diane just mentioned that I am a new hire at Google. I, I came in about four months ago, so I'm still, I think, technically a Noogler. And I came from uh, a, a traditional brick and mortar company, a 77, 78 year old company, uh, Fortune 300 company, lots of different properties everywhere, lots of different lines of business. And a lot of mess, a lot of what one of our customers refers to as the ugly enterprise, right? A lot of just stuff underneath the covers when you looked at IT, and there's some examples up here of, of that messiness. Legacy applications, in some cases dating back 40 years, in some cases dating back two months, right? This whole mix. Data silos literally everywhere. Um, you know, we had silos upon silos and, and what have you. And really importantly, a changing view on the value of data. There was some data that we always knew was important, and there was other data, video data, for example. We had no idea what to do with the data, and it was expensive to store it, so we sort of threw the data out, right? We didn't store it, it just was, was purged um, quite quickly. That obviously has changed. There's a lot more that you can do with um, that range of data now. Regulatory environments that I'm sure a lot of you in the room deal with on a daily basis, bringing the regulators along as you're trying to innovate. And then really importantly, cloud skills are really hard to find and really hard to recruit for and really hard to retain, right? And so this was our world. I'm imagining, I, I expect that this is a lot of your worlds. I see a lot of nodding heads in the room. And by the way, as I've been getting up to speed at Google, as I've been meeting with a lot of customers, I hear this from traditional ugly enterprises, from the traditional brick and mortar companies, and I hear this from a lot of folks that we think of as startups that have actually been evolving the way they think about their architecture as well. Now, the the amazing thing for me and really what brought me here to Google was understanding when you can even start to make small dents in these challenges, when you can start to pull out some of the data and really apply some, some real analytics to it, some real machine, machine learning to it, et cetera, you can see amazing impact on your business. We managed to, to bring down costs, not just IT costs, but marketing costs, sales costs, operations costs. We were able to grow revenues. We were able to really launch products much more quickly, and it was all due to using the cloud to, um, to really unlock the power that is locked inside the organization. So as I come here to Google, a large part of what brought me here was this idea of, of working with companies and really helping them to unlock the value that is hidden within their companies, that is just sort of trapped within these silos. As I've been focusing on, the, on what we call our customer team and really th uh, thinking about how do we work with our customers to really maximize their success, there's three areas, three pillars that we are focusing on. The first is investing in your success. The second, uh, which Ors and others alerted to, uh, uh, alluded to earlier today, is around partnership economics. And the third is taking the partnership beyond support into a whole new realm. And I'd just like to spend a couple minutes talking about each of these different pieces, starting with investing in your success. <clears throat> I think Tim from Snap said it just a couple of minutes ago that, that when you move into the cloud, there's a lot of trust involved, right? There's a lot of, of uh, trust involved. It's a partnership. It's not a quarter by quarter thing. It is something that really extends much longer um, than that to years and, and decades. And we at Google um, are really focusing on that interface that we've got with customers. In our customer team, we're hiring uh, a thousand, over a thousand people to join the customer team to really sit and work with customers to make sure that it isn't a remote relationship, but is something that is really a personal relationship because it is a trust-based um, endeavor. Now, really importantly for us at Google 
as I've talked to customers, what they've really said is, help me unlock the power of Google within my company. Help me get the, the, my engineers connected to your engineers. And so as you look at even our customer team, we're actually focused on hiring three times as many people in the technical side as in the non-technical side. Because the problem solving that comes when you can get engineers connected with other engineers and really start to figure out what should the workflows look like, what should the applications look like, how do we migrate, how do we get from point A to point B, that is really powerful and it's really dependent on having people who want to work with customers, and by the way, all of our engineers are dying to work with customers, and we're hiring more and more who want to do this, getting them to actually sit down and understand what's going on inside a company. It's not a new build, it's not a fresh start, so how do we help you get from point A to point B? So that's about scaling. The other thing we're doing is really looking at the, at the capabilities that we're bringing to bear, and these are just a couple of examples of of changes that we're making, of new capabilities, new muscle that we are building within Google. The first is um, in the office of the CTO. So the, the thing, one of the things that I hear continuously when I meet with CIOs and CTOs is, you know, I need help figuring this out. I don't just need help with you explaining to me what Google does, right? I need that as well. I need to understand technically, I need to understand the security, I need to understand um, the, the pricing, all of that, but really, I also need help just understanding how do I migrate? How do I manage the, the board? How do I manage our CEO? How do I deal with budgets? How do I deal with all of these issues? So the idea of the office of the CTO is to really bring peers who are familiar with Google but also familiar with what it's like to work inside one of these enterprises to be advisors, to really help you with your migration. A second element here uh, is what we are calling, referring to as value optimization, or the value optimization teams at Google. And the idea behind this is, again, it's a trust-based partnership. It's a long-term partnership, and it's one that is predicated on us partnering with you to make you successful. And so we've got teams in our customer team who are focused on reducing your spend on GCP. Not by saying, please stop using us or what have you, but by actually helping to make you more efficient, helping <clears throat> where we see uh, opportunities for you to save money, moving on to different services moving, uh, optimizing your application, et cetera. Now, putting on my sales hat, because I also have a lot of salespeople, this isn't the best thing for a given quarter, but we're not in this for the given quarter. We're, we're in this for the long-term relationship and really helping to make you successful. And the last piece, which I'll touch on later, is professional services. Now, we had Paul from Accenture up here. I want to be very clear um, that you will not see 100,000 Google professional services folks running around trying to serve customers. That's not what we're in the professional services game for. What we are really focusing on here is enablement, both customer enablement and partner enablement. How do we actually develop the IP? It's one thing to do it academically. It's the other thing to do it with real customers and then bottle it up and take it to partners and help partners understand how to actually go to market, how to actually help customers. Um, it's about training uh, for our customers developers, for our partners developers, et cetera. So, so these are all new skills and new capabilities that we're really um, bringing to market at scale. But getting to market at scale is obviously just one part of this. And Or spent um, a good amount of time earlier talking about in GCP how we've been thinking about pricing. I sort of describe this as partnership economics. Right, this is something where, as I mentioned, our success is your success and vice versa. And, and we need to make sure that we're actually de uh, uh, delivering our products and services in a way that demonstrates that partnership. Now, one of the fascinating things as I started this listening tour um, when I first joined is uh, people are obviously incredibly excited by cloud. There's a pretty full room. Lots of people are, are just interested in this concept. They see the idea, they see the potential that can be unlocked by moving to cloud, and they're really excited about how quickly the world is moving. But you keep hearing these buts, right? You keep hearing the, but we're kind of worried that the full potential of the cloud is not really being delivered, particularly on the economic side. We've gotten to a place where I don't have to own data centers, which is great, where I can tap into services on demand, which is great, but you're still sort of making me figure out how do I plan uh, capacity years in advance in many cases, right? Um, 
elements like that we think are under delivering on the promise of the cloud and so you can look at a lot of what we're doing from a business model and a pricing standpoint under this umbrella that, that Ors refers to as uh, putting the cloud back in cloud but really thinking about how do we deliver not just technical and the capabilities that the cloud has promised but also the economics and the business models that the cloud has promised. And you can see this, I pulled out some illustrative quotes from conversations um, with different CIOs. And you can see, um, hopefully, how some of these hopefully will resonate with you. And we've got some examples of the solutions that we've put in place to try and address some of these issues. And I won't um, read through each one of them. I'll let you uh, take a quick look through them. But they're fundamentally these questions around how do I plan? How do I budget? This idea of penalty or punishment, right? I, customers keep saying, don't punish me for actually being more efficient about how I'm using GCP. Don't make me sign up for something that if I'm successful, I will end up missing and overpaying for um, down the road. And so a lot of our, uh, of, of our um, effort on the business side has been in trying to figure out how do we both deliver on the flexibility of the cloud, the on-demand of the cloud, reward, uh, long-term commitments and long-term relationships, and also take into account the total cost of ownership. Right? This, uh, we recognize this doesn't stop at the doors of, of Google or the doors of GCP, that when you're looking at a cloud migration, you look at this from the context of how much am I spending? How do I manage that, that enti the entirety of that budget? There's no CFO that I've ever met who only cares about this line item, but you can do whatever you want on the others. right? Um, and so the focus that uh, we've talked about today around automation, about zero ops, around no ops, is really meant to try and address that skills gap, but also to start to address the overall total cost of ownership question. And we believe that this works. It's not just solving individual bit problems. Well, when you add it together, uh, what we see continuously in, in um, competitive situation after competitive situation is that this approach, the idea of sustained use discounts, the idea of custom VMs, et cetera, can deliver between 20 to 30 percent lower um, pricing for in, in aggregate across the solution than what you see from other cloud providers, and obviously substantially lower than many on-prem solutions as well. So we're excited by this because we, again, think that this not only is the right thing to do by the customer and helps us build trust with the customer, but we believe that it's the right way for people to start migrating to the cloud and it's the right expectation that people should have from the cloud. Now, all of this is good. If we can build the relationships, hopefully have you view this as a partnership, hopefully deliver the ROI and the economics, not make CFOs hate the cloud, make CIOs very comfortable with the fact that they're operating in a predictable environment, in a environment in which we've got each other's backs. But as we looked at that, all, that whole equation and how we deal with customers, we took a step back and said, okay, what about that last part? You've deployed, you're in the process of deploying, you've actually deployed something in the cloud. You've taken a lot of risk. This is now your business is running somewhere else. How should we be thinking about support, right? Support fundamentally is, is historically quite a reactive function, right? It's a, it's, if something breaks, we will fix it. If something breaks, call the call center, send the email, do whatever it is that you do for support, and we will dig into the problem and we will help fix it. And obviously that's important, right? If something breaks, we want it up and running as quickly as possible. What we're trying to do is to take that concept of support and really move it to, to, to be beyond the reactive, to be much more proactive about helping to prevent problems from actually happening in the first place. And there's a couple of different elements of this. I've, I've talked about professional services and training, but this really, it's hard to overstate the emphasis that we're putting on training and certification and really supporting our customers as they make this journey. So today we're announcing um, two new certifications that we've launched, one around for cloud architects to recognize, um, to, to develop and recognize professionals who spend their time working on uh, developing and building applications in the cloud. The second, which we believe is an industry first, is around data engineer certification. How do you actually build data solutions? How do you build ML solutions? Who's really been trained and vetted to be able to do that? So we're excited to launch those pieces. And then we recognize that 
that the one side of this is certifying people in advance. The other part is people like to talk to people, right? They're, the idea of, I have a problem, let me find somebody who can help me out with that, we think is really important. So we're also creating these environments where you can get hands-on dialogue with Google engineers, not because you've got an army of people walking around, we'll also help during implementations, but if you're just working on some code, or you have a machine learning problem and you've got a bunch of data scientists but you really want to tap into a broader network to help problem solve more broadly, we're creating this advanced solutions lab which is really focused on machine learning. The idea behind this is that our customers can work with us, they can send uh, their teams from, the, from our customers to sit with Google machine learning experts and bring your own data and let's, let's collaboratively help you solve that problem, build the model, tune the models, what have you, whatever problem that you're facing, we can, we can help take that to the next level, and, or at least be problem solving partners in that. So that's the, what we're calling the Advanced Solutions Lab. About two days ago, actually I think exactly two days ago, uh, we cut the ribbon on what we're calling the launch pad. Um, uh, launch pad space here in San Francisco. I don't know San Francisco that well. I'm told it's a couple of blocks from here, if anyone wants to see it. Uh, we can certainly get you the address later on today. Uh, but we did the ribbon cutting with the mayor. This is a space, uh, two days ago, this is a space in which developers can just come in and meet with other Google developers and say, here's my code, what do you think? Here's my code, I'm having this problem, can you help me think through this problem? How would I do this in GCP? Questions like that, that we think just sort of starts to foster the, the, not just the formal interactions, but also gives a vehicle for the informal. And we'll be looking as we prove out the model here to scale that more broadly. Now I'm really excited to also introduce this concept of customer reliability engineering. So we talked about training, and that is all about helping your developers, your partners, get ahead of the applications that you're building to get, to ensure that we're building reliability into those applications. But we realize fundamentally that the applications that you're running, the workloads that you're moving to the cloud, to GCP, it's one thing for us to say, don't worry, GCP will be up and running. But if your app goes down because of something that, that happened or some misunderstanding of how to use GCP or what have you, it's really not, doesn't feel very good, right? It doesn't feel very good at all to say, well, our, it wasn't our fault, it was your application was designed poorly. So the idea behind the CREs, as we're calling them, the customer reliability engineers, is that they will actually partner with the, uh, with the customer and look at your production applications and, and if the customer wants it, dig into the code, put it through the same production readiness processes that Google applies to its own applications that also run in the cloud. So you can actually have our, our team work with your team on, on is, the, um, is the application developed right for the cloud? Is, are your production processes correct? Is your operational processes correct? If you want our, our um, pagers will go off when your pagers go off. It really is a model of shared accountability that we are offering to take for our customers' applications running on GCP. Now we've got a great example of this after lunch um, with uh, Pokemon Go that we'll talk about and how they use CREs to really get their service to where it's been. So I will, um, we'll be talking more about this later on this afternoon, but we're very excited by this. We again, think this is something that is unique in the cloud world and unique um, in, in the engineering world, and we think that this really changes the equation of trust between a provider, uh, a, a cloud provider and a company. And then finally, I'd be remiss if, not, if I didn't talk about our partners and how we are trying to enable our partners, uh, networks, to really um, focus on our customers and help deliver solutions with our customers. 13,000 partners are enrolled to and enlisted to help people on Google Cloud. And you can see the names on here. They, they range from boutique firms to the Accentures who you saw up here, PwC, who's been a longtime uh, partner of ours, and the list goes on and on. We're very excited by this, this ecosystem. We recognize that, that we can't do everything, that you can't do everything, and where you want a partner, we're not gonna force you to, uh, work with the partners, but where you want the partners, what we want to do is make sure that they are trusted partners of Google, that they are trained in how to use Google Cloud, that they are trained to support you in the right way, that they're enabled to get access to Google so that you can enable that um, 
engineer to engineer, product to product engagement that we've been talking about. And in that spirit, we are announcing two new partner programs today as well. The first is around competency. So the, the same uh, idea around the certifications, but really looking at our partners and saying, how do we, um, that the, the, the we can certify that you are, have a competency in certain areas. CINT here is an example who we have certified as having a competency in machine learning. And that means that you can trust with confidence that, that Google believes that they are great partners to work with you on machine learning. We've got similar competencies around app development and uh, data analytics. And we'll be rolling out more and more of these over time. And then obviously, um, I think Tim also from Snap mentioned managed services um, as really a, a, a big part of what's going on in cloud. And we are continuing to deepen our engagement with managed service providers. And you can expect to see more from us on this, both in hybrid environments as well as uh, lift and shift types of environments. So with that, I uh, spoke quickly at the end because I am starting to smell the dinner, uh, the lunch that is uh, awaiting everybody outside. So to recap, we've got the three pillars that we've been focusing on, investing in your success, the true partnership economics, and taking the relationship beyond a support relationship. Um, so thank you very much.